Hello family. I am introducing here my most recent vlog of how to support your loved one through illness, specifically mental illness, but I will make an important comparison during this video. Just a reminder to subscribe to my channel. You will need to have a YouTube account to be able to do that. They are free and if you need any assistance in creating one, let me know and I can put a quick video together for that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions you'd like to ask me, scroll through the videos that are directly below this. And then if you have a YouTube account, you can leave a comment uh, with your question or suggestion or comment. And then if this video is something that you can relate to or you know somebody who can relate to it, please, please, please feel free to share. Thanks. Here are two pictures of illness. On the right is a picture of me on a bad mental health day. You'll notice I'm curled up with my favorite blanket and I look very washed out and drained. Um, I can see here that my under my eyes is red because I obviously had had a day full of crying. And on the left is a picture of my husband and I when his sister got married actually at her wedding reception and my husband was um, going through chemotherapy as he lives with an incurable form of cancer. Keep these pictures in the back of your mind as we go through the presentation because I am going to make a comparison between people who have depression and how you care for them and people who have cancer and how you care for them. Hi family, Christine here. I've been thinking a lot lately about the fact that my husband and I are about to celebrate our 17th wedding anniversary. It's times like this that you're inspired to look back and take an account of the life you've lived together. And it got me thinking about some of the not so happy times that we've been through. Um, my husband's been wonderful and supportive of me in my battle with depression. and. On the flip side of the coin, my husband, for the last 15 years, has been battling an incurable cancer. So then I started thinking about similarities in the way that you, as a spouse, support the person that you're married to when they go through illness. So I did some Google research um, and I landed on uh, two different websites. One was uh, Psychology Central, which I've quoted from there before, and the other was the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. And what I did was I basically just typed in how to support someone you love with depression or with cancer. So Psych Central says there are five main things you want to do or not do when your loved one's suffering from depression. First is you want to be there. You want to walk alongside them in support. Uh, you don't want to tell them, I know what you're going through, because you really don't. Um, depression is an illness that people really suffer in silence. They don't share a lot of their um, deepest, darkest thoughts openly with their loved ones. They may with their therapist or with a psychiatrist, but um, we tend to keep the worst of ourselves tucked away um, for fear of judgment. So you just wanna walk with them and be with them and be present in their lives. You can walk with them metaphorically and you can walk with them physically, but not until they're ready. Just don't, don't push that. Um, they'll know when they're ready. Um, offer it, but don't push it. You want to um, give them small gestures that show you care. So that may be cooking dinner. I would caution though that when they're in their darkest days you don't want to cook while they're there or necessarily stay for dinner um, i would cook dinner and offer it or drop it off and then go because again one of the things that we do is suf suffer self-care wise so if you um, come there and you cook an elaborate meal 
it might be a nice gesture on your end, but it's not necessarily going to be received well on the other end, especially if you don't like clean up after yourself. <laughs> so you're unmotivated when you're depressed from um, basic self-care. So you might not be eating. Um, you might not want to spend time with people. So dropping off a meal is a great way to support somebody. You could also just call them and tell them that you love them. Uh, if they don't um, answer the phone, don't be alarmed by that. Uh, just leave a message. Let them know that you're there when they're ready to talk and that you care about them and you're worried. So that's all great ways um, to be active in participating in somebody's life. So the next three I'm going to give you are don'ts. You don't want to judge that person. Don't make them feel bad about themselves in any way, shape, or form. I have actually heard people say things to their spouses that just blow my mind. Remember, this is supposed to be a loving relationship. So if you're telling your loved one, what did you think was going to happen? You're belittling them and you're making them feel stupid. Not the way you want to approach somebody with depression or crying isn't going to help. That's another one. Absolutely not helpful. Sometimes crying does help. And sometimes crying is just a way that we're gonna purge the sad feelings. And sometimes we're gonna cry for days and that's okay. Especially when you're going through a stressful time. It's a form of expression just like laughter and smiling. So don't tell people not to cry when they're going through depression or a stressful time. Um, you want to make sure that you stay away from things, uh, sayings like, it's a matter of perspective, you have to look at the glass half full, or you choose to be happy or not. Those are not sayings that anybody who suffered from depression would utter out of their mouth because it's not that easy. Um, when you're depressed, it clouds everything in your life. So telling somebody that they just need to be happy is counterproductive because then they start thinking, what's wrong with me? Not good. Um, you want to avoid things that um, give the appearance of tough love. So things like snap out of it, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, um, and really understand that depression is not a weakness and it is not a flaw, it's an illness. And as an illness, it needs to be treated by professionals, psychotherapy, medications, um, support groups, it needs to be treated. And then you need to be patient. This is the biggest one. There's no timeline for depression. None. So I struggled once for a year and a half. This time I'm on the tail end of three years. So you don't know how long that person's going to suffer, but being uh, patient with them, um, supporting their recovery, making sure they're going to their appointments and things of that nature, or offering to go with them if they're having a rough time. You don't have to go in, you can wait in the lobby but just be there to be supportive. It's one of the very best things that you can do. But patience is key. So now we're gonna look at ways that loved ones support people with cancer. So one of the top three, a couple of things that the National Comprehensive Cancer Network says that you should do for somebody who's suffering with cancer is to offer companionship. Hmm, sounds like a lot of being there and walking with somebody, just being present. Um, you offer to give small gifts that help them um, feel better. So you could give them a card or you can give them some bubble bath, um, things of that nature, just small tokens to let them know they're cared for. Um, card, sending a card in support, those are great things. Um, delivering food is another thing that they mention that is 
important for people who are going through cancer because again they may not have much of an appetite and a healthy meal might be too much for them to prepare because maybe smells make them sick or they're too weak to stand to prepare a meal or anything of that nature so bring them food they don't say to cook them a meal in their house and then hang around for a couple of hours because when you have cancer you don't want to be exposed to unnecessary germs you can offer to run errands and you can do the same for somebody who's depressed so if they need their laundry picked up from the dry cleaners or running the kids to and from different types of events, maybe a band concert or a wrestling match or something of that nature, just being out in public for that person so that they don't have to be, that's actually also excellent, excellent advice to um, provide support for somebody who's suffering from depression. And then the last one is being the coordinator of things that make their life easier. We can do that for people who have cancer, but it's not necessarily the same viewpoint for somebody who is going through depression. Uh, coordinate things that the individual is not able to do for themselves. So call their hairdresser and come and have them cut, come to their house to cut their hair. Take the dog to the vet for them. Um, grocery shop for them. Just things that they don't want to get out and do on their own. Those are great ways to support somebody living with cancer as well as somebody living with depression. So the, the things that stood out to me when I looked at these two lists and compared was that there were a few things missing from the cancer list and they are don't judge don't use tough love and be patient and i understand why they're not on the cancer list but they are on the depression list and the sad 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 truth there is that cancer which is your body literally killing itself is more socially acceptable than depression somewhere somewhere down the line we got a crazy notion that depression wasn't an illness. It is. It is. Not too long ago, I was in a rough patch and I was crying and crying and crying and I told my husband, why are you still with me? You didn't sign up for this. And he kind of startled me a bit. He said, Christine! And I was like, what? And he said, I absolutely did sign up for this. In my vows was for richer, for poorer, in good times and in bad, and in sickness and in health. I did specifically sign up for this. So I want you to keep that in mind. It just blew my mind and I went, oh my gosh, he's totally right. Being supportive of somebody during any kind of an illness is a part of our marital vows. Um, he did sign up for it, and he has showed up for it too in a spectacular fashion, and I love him for that. So now I'm going to share a couple of wedding pictures with you. Uh, Chad and I actually had two weddings. We had our church wedding, and a few years later we went <laughs> to Vegas because Chad's a huge Elvis fan and Elvis uh, performed a vow renewal for us. Um, and it was, it was a great day, it was so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed these pictures. Thanks much, have a good one.